Welcome to another Sunscreen Saturday. Today we're going to do another mineral because I did some microneedling on my neck and chest and that is definitely when I want to get into minerals. Today I'm bringing you another one from Korea. This is Make Prem and it is called UV Defense Me. Blu-ray fluid. The Blu-ray line is supposed to have something in it that keeps your skin a little bit cooler than it otherwise would be. It's probably just a little bit. It might be good. It might not really do much of anything. This is completely mineral. It is zinc oxide titanium dioxide. And did I already say it's 50 SPF plus 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 plus? Not bad. It's also pretty big. This is 200 mil and it's a pretty good price. And that's one of the things I like about the Asian sunscreens. Primarily Korean, but some Japanese sunscreens as well I like. They have a much better price than in the United States, and they don't have something called the FDA. <laughs> so they have four chemicals, you know, a couple of juveniles and a couple of tinosorbs that are not approved here. And these are so much more stable. They do not degrade like hours degrade as soon as a half an hour after putting on. And we also use things that degrade each other. We need one for UVA and one for UVB. You put them together and they kind of degrade each other. Sometimes you have to use one thing and another thing to stabilize that thing, but it still degrades. It's just kind of a, a chemistry mess in the United States, whereas it's, you know, simplistic and beautiful these other ingredients that are approved in the EU and in Asia. But I'm thinking when we're doing something that's mineral, what is this offering me that I can't get in the United States? And I, I don't know that it's really offering me much to tell you the honest truth. I'm not going to read you all the ingredients, but I'm going to give you the highlights. So they're zinc and titanium and they don't mention the percentages they are not legally bound to in Asia. Antioxidants, Centella asiatica, and uh, tocopherol. It's their skin identicals, sunflower seed oil, sodium hyaluronate, and soothing ingredients, again, the centella, again, something I can't pronounce, and the sunflower. So there's a couple of good ingredients in here. And I have to be honest with you. <laughs> I've tried this. I don't love it. I don't. I find it to be drying, but I also believe that I am sensitive to zinc. I find a lot of mineral sunscreens to be drying that other people don't. That's just my point of view, but you should keep it in mind Oh, when you see what I have to say. Teaspoon. Here is a quarter teaspoon. Now this is normally what you do for face and neck. I definitely want to get my chest today, but the truth is, after I put this on, I am going to put on a different shirt because there's no protection like fabric. This is what it looks like. And it's a little runny, but it's not terribly runny. And I have to move my mirror. <laughs> so I'm gonna do a little bit more for my chest. And it goes on white and it is scented. I don't know if it's fragrance scented or something else that's in here that is scented, but there's a scent. And let's just work on rubbing this in. And see how long it takes to get rid of this whiteness. It does feel soothing initially, I have to say. So as you can see, the white's not disappearing much. I'm going to add some to my chest, even though I am going to cover. And my mirror doesn't go that low. Let's see. So if you don't put on enough, it blends in pretty fast. But if you put on the right amount, you may have a little work to do, and you could probably move to another zone and let it sink in a little bit, and then do a little more work. But it 
It's not. It's not without its whiteness. Even when you get it worked in. So this is worked in and it is indeed still a little white. There are certainly things that I've tried that are worse. It's also in my eyebrows and it's also a teeny bit clumpy. You need to take a look afterwards and make sure that just like oh, my forehead's not even worked in evenly. And my hairline. Okay, I am going to clean my brows and <laughs> clean around my hairline and let this settle in for at least 15 minutes, maybe longer. We'll see how it goes. It has a slightly greasy kind of feeling to it, ever so slightly, but I think these are emollients they put in it to counteract the dryness of the minerals. Minerals are in their nature drying, absolutely. And many companies try to compensate for that. Some are successful at it and some just aren't. You still get that dryness, or I do anyway. And I'm beginning to sting a little bit, just a little bit on my chest. So I'll be back in 15 minutes. I'm back. It's about 20 minutes later and it's time to put on some foundation. I will say that I feel that the whiteness has faded quite a bit. Not a hundred percent though. There's still a slight whiteness, but it's not so bad. In my necklace line here, my charming necklace line, it's accumulated. Um, it doesn't feel dry to the touch, but it does not feel as liquidy as when I first put it on. So there is a bit of a dry down. And because I have been using Reboot on most of my foundations, I'm going to do the Reboot now and see how that works. Yeah, there's definitely still a little bit of a white cast, but if you're quite fair, it's possible that you could wear this on its own. Or for me, even if it's winter time, I could probably do that, but I wear foundation all the time. There's a little bit of drag, so this is definitely dried down. And it's interesting because I'm used to something that is more moisturizing. I never get drag with my foundation. So that moisturizing effect that it has when you first put it on, that's kind of soothing moisturizing, that has abated and the dryness is here. So if you have very dry skin, I don't think you're going to like it. My skin is not dry per se. It is mature and I moisturize it like crazy. The truth is my skin is very rarely without anything on it. You know, I wash my face and I put on all my moisturizers. But once in a while, I will wash my face and do red light or, well, not once in a while, quite often. And I will leave my face without anything on it for a little while. And I really feel that it's normal to dry, which is exactly what it is in the description box. I'm going to take a beauty blender, which I usually don't have to do with this foundation because there isn't any slip here and I need to blend this. So that's unusual. That's why I like to use the same foundation so you can really see what's going on. And you know what, I got some under my eyes, so we may as well do a little concealer and see how that works. i just do a finger blend. I don't feel like being particularly fussy today. Ooh, ooh. I wouldn't get this under the eyes. It is crepey city. So if you have any crepiness under your eyes, any dryness under your eyes, don't put this under your eyes. I'm going to get my Beauty Blender wet and see if I can get some hydration back into that area. Okay, that's a little helpful, not incredibly helpful. I stand by what I just said. I would not get this around the eyes. It's just a little too drying. 
So it'll be interesting to see how this works with this foundation. I'm, de I'm seeing signs of dehydration already and a little bit right here kind of sinking in. In my 8X it doesn't look as nice as it could look um, as far as I'm concerned but this is something I think we're going to come back in several hours and see what is going on. It's going to be hot today I can tell. It's not even 11 and I don't have my door open all the way because I can feel the heat coming in so it'll be a nice test. Spoiler, I have worn this before. I do find it to be drying. I don't really like this but I keep it for maybe putting on my chest. I, I haven't worn it in months. That's the honest truth. I just don't like it that much. But, uh, you know, you have a different skin type. You might like it. So we'll be back in a couple of hours and we'll see what's going on with the foundation. All right, you guys, I'm back. I totally let time slip by. It's much darker in here and um, I'm not sure what this is going to look like. It's not looking too hot on my little monitor. But I, I just don't know how to shoot under low light. I, I just don't think I have the right lights for it, so it always looks weird, and I can't stop looking at my little LED. Yeah, but that's not what we're here for. Let's put on the glasses and do some serious detective work. Um, okay, it looks okay. Ah, uh, you know what? No. It's cracking at the forehead frown lines, and I mean cracking, and I usually don't get that. It's cracking over here, and over here where there's um, dehydration caused by this, and over here. From, now mind you, these are like 200 or something. These are really big magnifiers, and this is an 8X mirror. So is it something that someone would see who has bad eyesight? No. <laughs> or who is at a distance of maybe two feet? Unless they have really amazing eyesight, probably not. But I do have to say that there is a tacky feeling going on here. So while the look is on the more matte side than I usually get with the Reboot, because I'm usually using far shinier sunscreens, and this one did have a bit of a shine, it's like this absorbs this and it it just has a slight weird tackiness. Weird to me. It might not be weird to you. I'm not used to it. I'm used to wetness and dryness, but this is a slightly tacky feeling and it does feel a teeny bit drying, but more than that, it looks dehydrating as when I put it on under the eyes earlier and then put on my concealer immediately it was like crepey city it was as if I put a ton of powder under my eyes so I am reminded why I really don't like this if you have normal skin if you have oily skin if you are younger if you don't have lines if you don't have dehydration you know, <laughs> well, what can I say? If your skin is in much better condition, then this might work for you. Most of the whiteness did abate after about 20 minutes, but for me, I don't like this. And I will continue to only wear it when I have to, which is after microneedling. Um, and I have other choices now, like the CeraVe Tinted Hydrating SPF 30. I think I would like that better because it doesn't feel as drying even though it looks like I splashed my face with water. That is only a 30 and this is a 50. So if you have to go outside and your skin is been microneedled, right? So your skin is kind of in a sensitive place, you want to go for a higher SPF. I don't love it. I don't love it. But it might fit into your routine with the caveats that I just mentioned. And that is going to wrap up this Sunscreen Saturday. This, by the way, has been on my face and the foundation's been on my face. It started pretty early, probably uh, nine hours. And that's it. Thanks so much for spending a little time with me. I hope it was helpful to you and I hope you come back again. Until we meet again, be safe and smart and I'm wishing you good health.